Dorothy Butler Gilliam was the first black female reporter for the Washington Post. She made history when women and minorities weren't included in newsrooms, when white cab drivers would pass her by after noticing the color of her skin. I knew I couldn't come back and complain about the problems I faced because that would be a perfect excuse not to hire other black women. A reporter for six decades, she helped shape the national conversation around race. This is Dorothy, and this is her story. At just 23 years old, she landed a job at the Washington Post. In her autobiography, Trailblazer, Gilliam says, I immediately faced prejudice outside and inside the tension-filled newsroom as one of the only three black journalists and the first African-American woman. You know, even colleagues who would be, you know, reasonably a collegial inside the post, if they saw me on the street, they would pretend they didn't know me. I felt isolated, but my emotional pain was light years removed from the experiences many young Negroes my age were having in the civil rights movement in the South. It wasn't just her peers either. Gilliam once overheard an editor call black lives cheap deaths. I made a mental note that I would someday find a way to fight against such arrogance ignorance and white supremacy. And later, as editor and columnist, I did. Gilliam would eventually cover what she called one of her most unforgettable assignments, the black community's response to racial integration at the University of Mississippi. James Meredith had been denied admission to the university because he was black. In response, he filed a lawsuit along with the NAACP against the university. And that's when everything started. The case went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, which ordered that Meredith be admitted. Gilliam felt like Mississippi. It was the, you know, the, the epitome of, of all that, that segregation had represented. Then Mississippi state officials blocked Meredith's attempts to integrate the school. After violent, deadly protests, federal marshals escorted him into the university. Meredith went on to graduate with a degree in political science. While on assignment in Mississippi, Gilliam faced vicious racism as well. Struggling to find lodging one night, she wound up sleeping in a room at a local black funeral home. So I just slept among the dead. It was, it was not pleasant, but I knew it was, it was a clean room and nobody was going to bother me. But like any dogged reporter, Gilliam stayed on the story, writing, The black people I interviewed were shocked and amazed by Meredith's courage and overjoyed by his determination to integrate the university. Years later, the young mom left her post for a while to care for her family. By the early 70s, Gilliam was back with the Post as an editor for the style section. Then I wrote a column for the Post in the, in the Metro section for about uh, almost 19 years. After decades of landing big stories, including reporting on Nelson Mandela, this trailblazer is looking ahead to the next generation of young women who started out just like her. She's an icon of inspiration and perseverance. That's Dorothy Butler Gilliam. GMA fans, Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. 
We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.